Hello, my friends. How are you? It's good to see you, Isla. It's good to see you, Adam. It's good to see you, Iad. It's good to see you, Leanne. It's good to see you, Isra. It's good to see you, Zaina. It's good to see you, Muhammad and Hamoudi. It's good to see you all. Hi, everybody. So I have a little song for you and then a little story. So here we go. Here is a mitten. A snug fuzzy one with a place for my fingers and a place for my thumb. Here are two mittens. A colorful sight, one for the left hand and one for the right. Here are our mittens as soft as can be a warm pair for you and a warm pair for me. Isn't that a cute little song, everybody? Here is a mitten, a fuzzy snug one with a place for my fingers and a place for my thumb. Here are two mittens, a colorful sight, one for the left hand one for the right. Here are our mittens, as soft as can be. One pair for you and a warm pair for me. Very good, my friends. See, I'm still wearing my hat and my mittens. I'm going to take them off right now because when I'm inside, I get too hot. And when I get outside, I need to wear them. Otherwise, I might catch a cold and then I'll have Melinda's nose cold. This is Melinda. And this is a story about Melinda's nose cold. Not her nose. No. Hmm. Written by Gail Chislet. And art by Helen Despito. Look at her in her bed. Let's read it together. Melinda. Favored lavender lace. Pink bows were more to Cynthia's taste. They wore socks of snow white pulled up to the knee. And when they sat down, they sat carefully. They loved to play house, especially tea party. Their dolls became real and joined in quite smartly. The girls spoke politely. Their manners were great. They never picked their noses or licked the plate. Those two were so perfect, it could give you a chill. They were strictly unnatural. Heck, they'd never been ill. Look at the two of them. Do you have a best friend like that? I do. Mm -hmm. The sun was barely up one morning when a gigantic sneeze shook the house of Melinda and Cynthia Sweeting. <gasps> Mrs. Sweeting rushed to Melinda's bedroom to find her starting and sneezing into her pillow, screaming, No! 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 She was not feeling well. Mrs. Sweeting knew an emergency when she saw one. Wasting no time, she summoned the doctor. By the time the doctor had opened his bag, the nose <coughs> no! coming from Melinda were deafening. Oh no, look at them. Oh doctor, whatever's the matter with Melinda? We'll know in a minute he said as he drew a long rod from his bag. This is a no-meter. It'll tell us how ill she is. Ill? Her eyes bugged out. Oh, but she's never been sick a day in her life. We are never unwell in this family. She looked down her nose at him. We 
I'm never ill in this family. That's how she's. This, that's a big doctor. Goodness gracious. It was a struggle to get the no-meter into Melinda's mouth. Nervously, they watched the red line rise higher and higher and 10 no, 20 no, 30 no, a 40 no, a 50 no. They looked at each other horrified. A 60 no. Suddenly, Melinda gave a twitch and roared. The no-meter shot across the room. The doctor picked it up, looked at it, and shook his head sadly. It's a 100 no. The poor girl has got a bad nose cold. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Her mother gasped. Doctor, what can we do? Smiling, he produced a bottle of pills from his bag. She'll feel better with this in her belly, he promised, holding up a large lavender tablet. No! Melinda almost deafened the doctor when he tried to fit the pill into her belly button. Make her comfortable, he called back as he scurried out the door. But I'm afraid she won't take it lying down. Melinda's mother brought her an adorable little biscuits and hot milk. No! Shrieked, Ma shrieked Melinda and blew them across the room. In the corner, Cynthia and the dolls huddled quietly and watched. Oh, poor Cynthia's a little scared. Later, Melinda's mother brought jam cookies and candies, a chocolate bar, a teddy bear, and a new lavender lace nightie. I'm not hungry, and my hand is shaky, said Melinda, and her fingers trembled about the cake. I seem to be about to... Oh, goodness! Oh, no! Stand back! Clear the room! cried Mrs. Sweeting. I think she's going to throw up. Oh, no, she was right. Suddenly, Melinda began pitching and tossing her food, the dolls, the pillow, just about everything into the air. Boy, said Cynthia as she scurried out of range. She must be feeling really bad. Look at Cynthia left. Look at all the things being thrown. She threw out everything. She threw up everything. By bedtime, Melinda was exhausted. She had spent the entire day blowing her nose and throwing up everything within reach. Whatever will we do if it goes right into her chest during the night? Mrs. Sweeting asked fr frantically. No! roared Melinda fiercely. Not into my chest! Oh no, she didn't want to hear that. Look at that. But she was very tired. Early the next morning, when Cynthia ventured into her room, Melinda was cool cheeked, well behaved, and smiling. Did it go into your chest? inquired Cynthia cautiously. With a sly little smile, Melinda said, look and see. Did it go into her chest? Let's see. <gasps> what? Cynthia carefully eased up the lid of Melinda's toy chest and peered in. It was too jumbled inside to see much. Leaning over, she began to investigate. Abruptly, Cynthia reared back and the lid shut. She gave a sneeze Phew! that rustled the curtains. No, said Cynthia. Oh, too bad. Now you've caught it, said Melinda. Oh, no, it went into the chest. And 
now her sister caught it. No! When Mrs. Sweeting came in with the breakfast tray, she found Cynthia blowing her nose at the top of her voice. Melinda's bed was empty. Mommy, I think I've got the flu now, called Melinda as she flapped past her in her nighty. Uh-oh, Mrs. Sweeting collapsed on the bed. Oh, look, she thinks she's got the flu. Ay, 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 Mama collapsed. <laughs> this is such a funny book. Boy. Melinda spent the entire day swooping about the house while Cynthia arrived in the bed roaring. What did she say? No! Even louder than her sister had. Towards evening, things were beginning to look better. As Melinda settled for a rest on the top of Cynthia's bedroom door, she could tell that Cynthia was improving ripping the pink bows off all her dolls and her clothes but she was hovering about a meter above the bed uh oh what's happening ripping all the bows off her clothes and she's hovering above the bed oh my goodness getting the flu now i see said melinda i'm fine exclaimed Cynthia defiantly as she forced herself back onto the bed. Neither girl got much sleep that night. They were up many times with the flu. <laughs> this is the flu. They're flying. Oh, goodness. So silly. Mrs. Sweeting was so pleased when things got back to normal. It was such a relief to see Melinda and Cynthia once more having a civilized tea party. She hoped they would never, ever, ever be ill again. Look, everybody's back to normal. And they're having their little civilized tea party together. I wonder if we all will ever get sick again, said Cynthia as she poured for the dolls. Why, who can tell? Belinda said as she politely passed the biscuits. Your pink bows do look lovely today, Cynthia. Oh, thank you, Melinda. How your lavender lace becomes you. Melinda, said Cynthia as she gently dabbed her lips clean. I hear that if you yell and yell, you get a little horse. Horse? A little horse? Oh, Cynthia, cried Melinda with delight. Let's go right out and try it. Oh, no, don't yell, yell, yell. It means your throat will get hoarse. You won't get a hoarse. Oh, those silly girls. Melinda flavored lavender lace. Pink bows were more to Cynthia's taste. They wore socks of snow white, pulled up to the knee. And when they sat down, they sat carefully. They loved to play house, especially tea party. Their dolls became real and joined in quite smartly. Their manners were great. They rarely picked their noses and licked from their never licked their plate. Sometimes they refused to behave as they should. They'd stir up some mischief. Life's dull when you're good. Oh no. And that's the end of the story of Melinda's no cold. I hope you guys don't get a nose cold too. And then you get the flu. But if you do, you know what to do, right? Stay home, stay warm, drink lots of lemon juice and water and tea and eat some chicken noodle soup. And if you feel worse, you got to go and see your doctor and call your doctor, right? And then before you go outside, you have to wear your mask. So that's the end of our story today. Goodbye for, for now, guys. <laughs>